Good morning to everyone. We just we thank you for joining in this morning uh, with Messages of Hope Ministries. Uh, we just pray that you would be, you know, get a great word from the Lord today. And we're excited about what God is doing in the earth, what God is doing in our lives. And we're just happy to be able to come before you and just share what the word of the Lord is saying this morning. This is a place where God is exalted. Love is exemplified, believers are edified, and hope is elevated. So we hope that you will get something on today that will enrich your life. Yes. We thank you for tuning in with us on today. Amen, amen. We want to just go before the Lord in prayer this morning, and we just uh, ask you to just join your faith with, with ours as we go before the Lord this morning and pray. Come on, let's, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Because this is truly a day that you have made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for the victory that we have in Christ. We thank you, God, that you have given us the victory over all of our circumstances. We know that we can live in this earth. We can walk in this earth knowing that we have the victory. You always causes us to triumphant in Christ Jesus. God, we thank you this morning that you are more than able, God. You are more than able to do exceeding and abundant above all that we could ask or think. So we thank you this morning, God. We thank you for the word. Now, Father, we just pray as we prepare to share your word with your people, God. We decrease that you may increase, Father. We just, we just rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us this morning. And Father, I thank you, Father. There's so much going on in the world today, God, but we still thank you, God. There's so many, there's so many trials, so many uh, tribulations, so much suffering that's going on in the world today. But our trust is in you. We don't lean into our own understanding this morning, God. We see things with the natural eye, Father God. We read things, God, and we hear things, but we don't lean on our own understanding this morning, God. We lean on you, Father. Our Hallelujah. trust is in you, God. Amen. We trust you, God. We believe you. Our faith is in you, God. This is a season to elevate our faith. This is a season, God, to depend more on you. This is a season to look to the hills from which cometh our help. So, Amen. Father, we just thank you for being a faithful God, and we thank you, God, for being a loving God and forgiving God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, which we need every day, God. So we just ask your blessings, God, upon the people, God, who are listening to this word, God, that their ears will be open to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. Holy Spirit, take over our service this day and speak to us and your people, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to preach a word, to teach a word this morning about maintaining peace, you know, in a chaotic world. Maintaining peace in a chaotic world because there's so much chaos going on. Let's go to the scriptures in uh, John uh, 14, 27 and John 16 and 33. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled yeah. and do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. John 16 and 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. As I was saying, there's, there's so many uh, things that's going on in the earth today. So much chaos. We have, you know, racial tension going on in our nation and not just our nation, but across the world. We have political, you know, tension and division that's going on. And we have, you know, uh, natural disasters that's going on in our country today and across the world. And you see what's going on and you know, on the West Coast with the fires, you know, we have to deal with, with hurricanes and, and we have to deal with things of that nature, Father. And, you know, it's just so much, so much going on. There's, there's the love, the love of many are beginning to grow cold and, you know, there's an abandonment of faith and, you know, diseases across the land. Of course, we're dealing with COVID-19 across the world. So there's so much that's happening in, in our society, the violence that goes on in our, in our communities and, and, and the financial crisis that happens as a result of some of these things I just mentioned. So as we, and I can go on and on and on. There's so much that's going on in our society today that we need to maintain the peace of God, you know, in a, in a, in a chaotic world. 
You know, Jesus said in his word, you know, in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations. In other words, he's saying in this world there's always going to be issues. There's always going to be trying times in this world until Jesus come back. We're going to have to deal and we're going to have to live in this world. Now, we do all we can to, to make peace in this earth the best that we can and to have unity the best that we can. But we know that true peace is not going to come until Jesus Christ come to establish that new peace here on earth. So in the meantime, we have, to, we have to maintain our sanity. We have to maintain our peace as Christians. We have to maintain mm -hmm. that peace in the middle of, of, of chaos. And this is a chaotic world. So the question that I have in this sermon is, how can we have peace with so much chaos around us? How can we have peace with so much chaos around us? And we, and we believe that we'll be able to address that question, you know, in this, in this topic today as we, as, as we move forward. But we want to define peace, first of all, to give, just to give some background here on, on peace. Shalom is the Hebrew term. It means peace, harmony, wholeness, uh -huh. soundness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, and tranquility. Tranquility is peace of mind. Yeah. It yeah. is wholeness. It's stillness. It's calmness. Shalom, having a peace about you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the peace that we're going to be talking about today is, is a peace that, that is more than just lack of conflict. You know, because we're going to have conflict in this, in this society that we live in. We're going to have conflict in the earth that we live in. So w this piece goes, it's, 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 it's more than that. It's more than just having a lack of, of conflict, and we'll get more deeply in there. But let's talk about the Greek word now for, for, for peace. Irene means to bind together, to join, to weave together. It means that a person is bound woven and joined together with himself yeah. and with God and others. Just like you see a basket weaver, when they weave a basket, those um, particular materials that they use are so um, bound together, they're so intricate, that you can barely remove or put anything in the middle of it. Yeah. So that's what we have with God. We have that peace, that peace that is bound and woven between us and him. Urini, peace. Yes, yes, you know, and... And, and peace is something that everybody wants, but, but few people are able to find that, that true peace that we're talking about that we have in God, that we have in Christ, that true peace that, you know, that, that can bring us through anything that happens in our lives. That's the kind of peace that, that we're talking about today. And, and, and Jesus can relate to a chaotic world because during his reign here on earth, he lived in a chaotic world. And we want to go to the book of Hebrews, you know, chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. You know, he lived in, in, in a chaotic world. Mm -hmm. It says, for we do not have a high priest yeah. who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Receive mercy yeah. and grace to help us in a time of need. Yeah. Jesus knew what it was like to go through pain. He knew what yeah. it was like to go through disappointment, but it said, yet he did not sin. Mm -hmm. We need to approach God's throne so we can have that same peace, that same grace. The same grace. And I, and I thank God mercy. for that scripture, you know, because, you know, it says that we can, we can receive this mercy and grace. We can find mercy and grace in a time of need. We're in a time of need. We need God's grace. We Amen. need God's mercy. Thank God that Jesus understands. Jesus, in other words, can relate to the hard times that we're going through. He can relate to the difficult times that we're going through. So thank God that we now can come boldly before the throne of grace yes. to, obtain, to obtain mercy, you know, to obtain grace in a time of need because we need that in the season, you know, and living in this society, and living in this earth. Yes. We, we need God's grace and we need God's mercy. God, Amen. we need your mercy and we need your grace. Amen. And Jesus knew what it was like to experience bad news. Yeah. He knew what it was like to experience loss, the close um, loved one, someone that he knew. In Matthew chapter 14, if you have time, read that whole chapter. Yeah. But Jesus knew that there was uh, suffering in the world, and he knew that those things and people around him would be affected. Uh -huh. And so his loved one, John the Baptist, his confidant, someone yeah. that he had um, – had dinner with, someone yeah. that he had um, poured a lot into, was uh, killed. And yeah. he was killed because of the fact that he stood upon the principles of what is in the word. 
and Herod, who was a king at that time, had married his brother's wife. And John the Baptist um, told him that that was a, yeah. a sin. Uh -huh. He told him that that was a, against the law. And Herod did not approve of that. Herod was not happy with that. So he threw John the Baptist in prison, and then later on, John the Baptist was killed. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus knew what it was like to, to have suffering, to have yeah. loss. Someone taken from you so early, someone yeah. that has so much potential, but it was taken from you so early. And so it says when you read in Matthew that Jesus knew what the loss was. Yeah. He felt the pain. He felt the suffering. He went through all the emotions that you go through when you lose a loved one. He knew what that was like. Yeah. And then later on in that chapter, it says that Jesus experienced unexpected demands. Mm -hmm. As he began to get away, he wanted to get away from ministering to the people. He just wanted to have some time alone. It says yeah. that as he heard the news about his loved one uh, being taken away and his loved one's death, that he just wanted to get alone to himself. Mm -hmm. But he couldn't do that because the crowd and the multitude, it says, was still around him. And so Jesus looked at the crowd, and there were so many that were following him. It says yeah. thousands upon thousands yeah. were following him. But even in the midst of his pain and his suffering, it states that Jesus looked upon the crowd with compassion. Yeah. And so the disciples said, let's send them away. It's too many of them. Let's send them away. But Jesus says, no. He says that we want to make sure that we feed these people. Yeah. We want to make sure that we do something. In the midst of the pain that he was going through, he reached out to others. Yeah. And sometimes when you're going through, when you focus upon someone else, when you help someone else, it helps you to deal with the pain that you're going through. You don't focus so much on what, what you're going through at that moment. Mm -hmm. But it helps you because you reach out to yeah. help someone else. So there was unexpected demand that was put upon Jesus yeah. to feed all of these people. Uh-huh. And it says, you remember that there uh, was someone that had um, five loaves of bread and two fishes. And Jesus took it and he blessed it and he looked up to heaven and blessed it. And it multiplied and they were able to give even more. And it says in the Bible that they fed over 5,000 men, women, and children. So even in the midst of his pain, he was able to reach out with compassion and to yeah. help someone else along the way. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and Jesus knew, you know, even in, even in, in living in a, in a chaotic society and meeting needs and meeting the demands, there are many demands on our lives. Yes. You know, when we live in a society, society put many demands, the demands of, of raising kids, the demands of managing uh, your finances, managing your marriage, and managing everything that's around you. So there's, there's many demands that are put on our lives. Jesus had many demands. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we talk about peace, sometimes to maintain our peace, we have to get away sometimes to a quiet place. Jesus to, would take the disciples oftentimes, and they would get away to a quiet exactly. place. Exactly. You know, even in the midst of a chaotic society, we have to sometimes get into a quiet place and get before the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And even in that same chapter of Matthew 14, after the multitude were fed, Jesus called his disciples away. He said, let's go away to yeah. a place. And that's the time of prayer. That's the time of meditation. Yeah. That's the time of seeking from God what God will have you to do. Uh -huh. And in that quiet place, it's also a time of being renewed. Being renewed yes. It's a time of being rejuvenated. It's yeah. a time of allowing your spirit to be uplifted. Because the demands of the day can take a toll on you. That's right. Emotionally and physically. Yeah. And so Jesus knew the, the, he knew that he had to get away. He knew the importance of quiet time. Yeah. And so that's what we must do. We must get away. We must have that right. quiet, time quiet time away. That yeah. time when you close off yourself from everything, yeah. from the things that you have to do for your job, for yeah. your family, and just have that quiet time with just, him. Yeah. And even though during that quiet time, you don't do all the talking. That's why they call it quiet time. Yeah. You sit there yeah. and you just yeah. listen. Yeah. And then allow him to drop into your spirit. Load into you what he has for you for on that day. What it is that he needs for you to encourage you and uplift you. Yeah. We all need to get away and have your quiet time. And in that quiet time, that's, that's a place where we go and, and we'll talk about later, but that we, we get into the presence of God and we pray. You know, sometimes we get in that quiet time just to, you know, enjoy and relax, you know, and maybe watch TV and take, itself, take ourselves out of the, you know, the chaos of this world. But we also need that time where we spend time in prayer. And what my wife had just said, not just speaking to God, but listening. Yeah. That's why it's called quiet time. 
listening to God and, 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 and what God is saying about your situation. You know, Jesus in his word, and we look at the book of John, I mean, John 16, 33, as we read, he said, in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. So Jesus made a contrast between the peace of the world and the peace of God. Mm -hmm. He made a contrast there between, between the two. The peace of the world is, is, is what they call escapism. You're trying to escape, you know, the trials. You're trying to escape the suffering of this world. But, but we're not going to be able to escape the things that's going on in our society. Mm -hmm. We couldn't escape, you know, COVID-19. And, and out west, they can't escape, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the fire that's destroying their, their, their properties. You know, but, but the peace of this world is about it. It, it deals with more escapism and, and avoiding trouble and refusing to face things in life. Right. You know, the peace of the world is, 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 is not the peace of, of, of that God and what Jesus is talking about here. This peace that the world gives us it, is seeking pleasure, satisfaction, contentment in this world, absent from trouble, mm -hmm. you know, positive thinking. The world, you know, uh, can only really give you trials and tribulation. Mm -hmm. But true peace comes from God. Amen. And Jesus made, a, made a, contra a, a contrast there of the peace of the world, you know, and, and the peace of God. In me, you shall have peace. In the world, you shall have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Now, the peace of God is what we're dealing with here today. And this peace is a deep peace that's, on, that's within, you know, tranquility of mind, a composure, a peace that is calm, you know, in the face of bad circumstances and situations. Jesus never said that we would be able to avoid bad times, bad uh, circumstances and situations. But he did say he'd give us peace to be able to go through it with a peace of mind and have that inner peace knowing that everything is going to be okay. Yes. You know, that's the peace of God, you know, when, 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 when Jesus said in his word, John 16 and 33, you know, you know, this peace that, 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 that Jesus is talking about is an overcoming peace. He said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In other words, Jesus was teaching his disciples that, that hey, I have overcome this world, the trials, the tribulation, everything that you go through in this life, I have overcome. You're going to have to go through these things just as Jesus did. Jesus went through some difficult times. He went through some chaotic times in this earth. But he's teaching us how to maintain our peace in this chaotic world, mm -hmm. you know, in this chaotic world. And we know that Jesus is the source of our peace. Amen. You know, our peace comes from, from him. He is the Amen. source of our peace. Amen. You know, God peace that he's talking about, Jesus talking about is a peace of assurance. You know, it's a peace of assurance. It's a peace of unquestionable confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, the peace with the sure knowledge that one's life is in the hands of God. And I, I'm recalled of a scripture in Romans uh, 8 and 28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. That scripture is an assure, it, it gives an assurance of peace, knowing that God, everything is in God's hands, everything is in God's control, mm -hmm. and whatever we go through in this life, whatever we're facing in this life, we know it's in God's hands. We know it's going to be okay. Yes, we're going to have to go through some suffering. Yes, we're going to have to go through some trials. Yes, we're going to have to deal with this chaotic world. But we know that everything is going to be okay. That's the kind of peace that, that, that Jesus is talking about here. And God is the source mm -hmm. of, of that peace. Mm -hmm. He's the source Amen. of that peace. And, and everything that we go through, it doesn't feel good. Yeah. It's not good. But even in the midst of it, we can find the peace. Yeah. We can find um, that rest, uh -huh. that tranquility, that yeah. irene that we, were, that we read uh, earlier as far as those definitions. That shalom, that peace. So in everything, everything that happens is not always good. Right. The situation, the circumstances. Right. But in the middle of it, we can always be reminded to find peace because we serve the one who is good. We That's serve right. a God who is good. We serve Amen. a God who looks out for us. That's right. We serve a God who knows our suffering, who knows what we deal with. And yep. he's there for us to give us the peace that's the past of all understanding. Yes, yes. And, and, and you know, we want to give some instructions on how to maintain the peace that God give us. First of all, mm -hmm. we have to understand that, that this peace is from God. The Bible said in Romans, uh, Romans 5 and 1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. Right. So this peace that we have is a peace that comes from being justified. Mm -hmm. You know, being justified. God, God has justified us. He has counted us righteous because of what Jesus did at Calvary. He counted us now down. righteous. So we receive God's peace because of justification. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't we don't just lose this 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 peace, the peace that God gives us, the peace, you know, with God is what I'm talking about. The peace that we have with God, we don't just lose. That's positional. That is the peace that we have for just being saved. Mm -hmm. When we're saved, we're in right standing with God. God is not our enemy. We're not an enemy mm -hmm. of God. We're in right standing. We have been reconciled. That was the work of Christ. Now we are reconciled back to God. 
That is, first of all, the peace that we have with God. We don't lose that. But we, ca- we got to guard the peace that's within us, though. That's right. The peace that's within us is the peace that we have to guard. You know, sometimes we can, we can be disturbed in our minds if we don't deal with things and we don't allow the peace of God, you know, to, to uh, surpass our, our, the peace of God to surpass our knowledge, right. you know, work in us. Colossians 3 and 15 says this, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. And what, um, what Paul is talking about there, how do we let the peace of God rule in our hearts? That, we, that comes from just trusting God. Yeah. That comes in knowing, first of all, first of all, that you are justified, mm-hmm. knowing that you are in right standing with God, because you are at peace with God. That's the first step. And now we can let the peace of God rule in our heart because we trust him. Like we said in Romans 8 and 28, we trust that whatever we go through in this life, everything is going to be OK. Amen. Whatever is going on in the world, everything is going to be OK. You know, God is in control. I'm not saying we're not going to suffer. That's not what I'm, the Bible never said that we would not suffer some things. The Bible never said that we would not go through some things. The Bible never said that we would not hurt sometimes. The Bible never said that we would not cry sometimes. Sometimes we may have to cry. We may have to hurt. But you know what? We still maintain our peace because we know at the end everything is going to be okay. That's the Amen. kind of peace that Jesus was teaching us us to have. Amen. And another way to maintain your peace is through God's word. Mm-hmm. In Psalms 119 and 165, it says, Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing can make them stumble. When you read, when you study, when you meditate, when you pray upon that word, it gives you a calm and peace. Yeah. I, uh, whenever you start out your day, I always say that if you can always start out with a word, yeah. with a word that is deep seated in you that will carry you through that day. Yeah. You know, it also says in Proverbs um, 16 and 24 that his word is like sweeter than a honey in wow. a honeycomb. Yeah. That's some sweetness. Amen. If you all ever had honey, that's some sweetness. And so you can take his word every day and just read upon it and just make sure that you're having it down on the inside of you. Yeah. Not just read it and say, oh, well, I've, I've read the word for that day. Mm-hmm. But meditating upon it, making sure that it gets inside of you, yeah. that you're able to quote it and, and you're able to repeat it without any problem. Yeah. Now, all of us have gone to school. Mm-hmm. We all had to study. We had to get that information in, in our heads before we can be tested and have our, our, our exams. Yeah. And so the same way, read your word, have it inside of you because a test is going to come. Yeah. And when that test comes, you can pull back upon that word that you have already studied, that you have already remembered in your mind. You've already put it inside of you. So it comes out like second nature. Yeah. So just like when you're having those, those exams, all that information just comes right back out. You're mm-hmm. able to just um, bring it out and, and put it down on paper so that you pass the exam. Yeah. The same way with the word of God. And so I, I challenge you each day when you get up uh, study that word continue to meditate upon it all day speak it even have it uh, on your on your earphones you know when you're going to work put that in your ear listen to that and it's the same thing over and over each day you get a word and sometimes you may meditate upon it uh, two or three days but it's sweet it's just like sweetness from the honeycomb and so one way that we maintain our peace is to make sure that we are in the word of God and another way we have to maintain a spiritual mindset you know, to have a spiritual mindset. The Bible said for us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Mm-hmm. And to have that spiritual mindset, we gotta, we got we to gotta be focused on the things of God. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to put more of God in our mind and less of things of the world in our mind. You know, we got to get a lot of that junk out of our mind to maintain our peace. See, some, so this is where we lose that, that, that inner peace sometimes because we got a lot of junk coming in our minds. We got a lot of issues coming in our minds. But we got to renew our mm-hmm. mind. we got to renew our thinking. And how do we do that? What she just said, that is in the word of God, mm-hmm. to maintain that spiritual mindset. Right. So another way we maintain that peace, we got to maintain a spiritual mindset. you yeah. got to think spiritually. you gotta, you got to just feed your mind with spiritual things. Yes, 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 yes. And also prayer, as we said earlier, that's time alone with God, time that you communicate and you hear from God. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Uh Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Yeah. So there's something that you have to do. It says, first of all, don't worry about it. Yeah. And then it says, pray about everything. And then he says, 
thank God for all yeah. he's done. See, there are prerequisites to receiving that peace, too. Yeah. You have to make sure that you've done those things. And when you do those things, you will experience God's peace. Uh -huh. And it says a peace that's a pass of all understanding. And my favorite scripture, Isaiah 26 and 3, says, But my God will keep you in perfect peace as your mind is stayed and fixed on him. Yeah. And so we have to remember, we have to fight for that peace. There are things that go on throughout the day yeah. that continue to try to rob your mind, to steal your peace, but you have to fight for it. Yes. You have to remember uh, going back to the word and going back to these things that we're saying, that uh -huh. you pray, that you meditate, that you take that time away. Yes. And you may say, well, I only have um, probably eight hours in a day where maybe I'm I'm working, yeah. and then I have the other two or three hours where I'm at home taking care of my children, uh -huh. and then the rest of the time I'm trying to take care of the home and do other things. So when do I have time to pray? When do I have time to do this? Yeah. If you don't carve out time to pray That's and right. to read your word, you'll never do it. Yeah. Just like anything else, you have to schedule it in your day. Yeah. And so for some people, early in the morning is that time. Yeah. For other people, it may be in the noonday. For other yeah. people, it may be at nighttime. But you found time to do all of those other things. That's right. So find time to put the prayer and put the word before you because it's what is going to keep you throughout the day. That's right. It's what's going to help uplift and encourage you when yeah. you have those times when you feel like, Lord, I feel like I am yeah. losing it. Yeah. But then his word comes back to your remembrance, and it gives you that peace of mind. It gives you that tranquility. That's it right. gives you what you need. You got to have that peace of mind. And the only way to, to maintain that peace, one of the ways is, is staying in prayer. You know, we, we, it's important what you just said, that we must stay in prayer. Because that's, that's casting our cares upon the Lord, that's too. Right. It's giving God all of our burden. There's a, we pray about, the Bible teaches us to pray about everything. Yes. You know, the, the, the small things, the large things, everything in your life. We should all have a, have a good prayer life. Mm -hmm. It should be no problem at all praying an hour a day. You know why? Because there's so much stuff going on in our lives. We can just, we can just talk for an hour about, to God about all the stuff, the good stuff and the crazy stuff that's going on in our lives. We can pray for an hour just doing that. Mm -hmm. But, but we got to give ourselves some time to listen to. We can't just do all the talking and not listen to God because God wants to give us some instruction. We know that this, this message may be basic to some, but it's a reminder. Yeah. It's a reminder during this chaotic times that we're living in, guys. It's, the, the times that we're living in, it's a reminder of what we have to do to maintain our peace. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have to, you know, to maintain my peace, sometimes I have to turn off the news. I can't, I can't watch too much, uh, 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 you know, CNN news or, or other news uh, media, mm -hmm. you know, and just, and, and just take in all that stuff. I have to go to God and pray about this stuff. Mm -hmm. God, what's going on in the world? I have to talk to God about this stuff because if you try to carry this stuff around, it'll, it'll, it'll hinder your peace. Yes. It will affect your mindset. Yes. It will affect your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, before you know it, your mind is weighed down, you're, you're burdened down. And the reason you may feel that way is because you got to go to God to release all the things that you have to deal with in life. Yes. He's your friend. Yes. God is our friend. Amen. Jesus is our friend. You know, he, he died for us. He, he loved Thank us. You. you know, God, God loved us so much, mm -hmm. you know, and we can't forget that. We always got to be conscious of how much God loves us. So that's why we have to go to him in prayer. Amen. And in closing, as we read uh, Philippians 4, 8 and 9, I must read those scriptures and keeping your mind upon Christ, as I had just said. And Philippians 4 and 8 says, and now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Paul says, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right mm -hmm. and pure mm -hmm. and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Again, keep in your mind, don't just think about the negative things. Think about the good things. Think about the positive things. Think about the things of God. Mm -hmm. And also another way to, to maintain our peace, we just have to be obedient to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, being obedient to God helps us to maintain our peace. When we're not obedient to God, you know, it hinders and it affects our peace, mm -hmm. our inward peace that we have with him. Yeah. Philippians uh, 4 and 9 says, what, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. Mm -hmm. And the God of peace will be with you. So we have to keep his commandments. We have to be obedient. Being obedient to God and doing what God tells us to do helps us to maintain yeah. our peace. It affects our peace when we are not committed, when we are not following God's commandments and we're not following God's orders. It hinders us our peace. I know it does with me and I know it does with everybody else. If I'm not doing what God has asked me to do and I'm doing something that I shouldn't be doing, it hinders my peace. That I have to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I repent of what I did, you know, because I have to maintain my peace. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing about maintaining the peace. We have to have a repentant spirit. 
That's not even on my notes. That's, God just gave me that one. We must have a repentant spirit if we're going to maintain our peace. When we're wrong, we got to go to God and say, God, I'm wrong. You know, we got to be able to to confess our sins to God, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and to confess our sins to one another sometimes, right. you know, and that we may pray for one another. Mm -hmm. But we have to go before God and ask for forgiveness. That's how we maintain our peace. Like I said, that was the, that's the end that concludes this, this, this topic that we're talking about today, but maintaining, you know, your peace in a chaotic society. Again, it's a lot of chaos that's going on in the world today, but we can maintain our peace. Amen. Remember this, positionally, you, you have peace with God. That won't change. As long as you're Christian, that will not change. You are not an enemy of God. You're a friend of God, and he's a friend of yours. We always remember that when you're going through tough times. I'm still positionally, you know, a friend of God, and I'm still at peace with God, which means that we're justified. We're in right standing with God. And now you have to protect that inward peace that Jesus is talking about. Peace I give you. Peace I leave with you. Not as the world give it. But he gives peace to us. He leaves peace with us. It's that inner peace that we have, knowing and trusting, that assurance that everything is going to be okay. Yes, I'm having tough times, but you know what? Everything is going to be okay. Yes, there's things going on in the world, but you know what? Everything is going to be okay. Because the God of peace, the Bible called the Prince of Peace, is with me. Not only is he with me, but the Bible said he dwells in our holy temple. He dwells within us. He had left the Holy Spirit with us to help us in this earth. we got to be aware of that. So we lose that awareness of God when things are going tough. Mm -hmm. And it'll shake me sometimes if I just watch the news. If I just watch the news and didn't pray, man, my mind would be so messed up. Mm -hmm. I would be so frustrated. You know, I would be so angry. But the reason I can maintain my peace, you know, and continue to serve God, continue to do the things in the community that you're called to do, the way I can do that is I have to maintain my peace mm -hmm. and not let all the other stuff affects me. Mm -hmm. And then I can serve God in the right spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And if you are out there and you want the peace of God, yes. you've gone through so much and you feel as if though I don't know which way to turn, then we ask you to repeat this prayer so that you can yes. receive the God of all peace. And then you can experience his tranquility, yes. his shalom, his irene peace. Amen. And so we'd like for you to pray right now in yes. the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I thank you as being my Lord and my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and I want to follow your word. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to cleanse me so that I may go upon the right path. I thank you that on today I heard the word and I want to keep your word in my heart. I want to follow after you. I want to be a disciple of you yes. and your word. So I ask you to forgive me. I accept you into my heart. Yes. I believe that Jesus died and that, Jesus, will ro that yes. Jesus rose and that he will return again. Yes. And so doing, I believe that. Yeah. And I thank you now that I receive it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, that concludes our, our, our sermon for today. We just encourage you to continue to maintain that peace in a chaotic society. Continue to serve God and serve your community. And uh, until next time, be blessed, be blessed. This is voting season coming up next month. Don't forget to vote. That is also your way you serve your community. And continue to serve people and love people. Amen. Love people. God bless you, and we see you the next time. Be blessed. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you for joining us for today's service. I don't want to end this without giving you the opportunity to join with God and to partner with Message of Hope Ministries uh, in order to continue driving the kingdom forward in order, in, and in order to continue uh, serving our community. So if God has put it on your heart to give, we have three ways that you can donate. The first is you can text the word GIVE to the number 828-705-3273. The second way is you can go to our website, www.mohraleigh.org slash donate. And the third way is you can write a check, make it payable to Message of Hope Ministries, and send it to P.O. Box 14426, 
Raleigh, North Carolina, 27620. We appreciate all the generosity thus far in terms of giving your time and your resources and your monies to help further God's kingdom. And I just want to pray over uh, the, the, the giving that is being done right now. So join me in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the word on this morning. We thank you uh, for using your servants in order to educate us about the peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray that all hearts, minds, and souls are receptive of what was said today, and we just come against anything that's, that attempts to take our peace. God, fill our hearts and our minds and our souls with peace and love and joy, especially during this time of uncertainty. God, I pray that you would touch everyone who gave and everyone who wanted to give so that by next week they can give even more. We pray, God, that this seed falls on fertile ground. We pray that everything that has been given to this ministry uh, gets used for your glory and that it advances the kingdom and that it wins more souls and that it changes the hearts of more people for the better. We pray for your angels of protection and your safe traveling mercies and just your blessings for all of those uh, listening this week. And God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. And we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, thank you for tuning in. We are excited to uh, see you all again next week here on Facebook Live at 10.30 a.m. Next week will be Youth Sunday. We'll be there, uh, and we hope that you will be there too with us to hear the Word of God, uh, to hear some good singing, and to start your weeks off great. So, God bless you, and have a Jesus-filled week.